Good morning, Delaware exporters. Happy Thursday to everyone. It is now 10 a.m. in the East Coast, and we're just about to get started with our webinar on online business development tools to help you grow your export sales brand and business. We're just going to give everybody a minute or two just to log in. We have a um, couple of uh, people joining us right now. I see them coming in. So we're just going to give it one minute and at um, sharply at 10.03, um, we'll get started with today's uh, uh, webinar and the presentation. Uh, we're very excited. We have a great and wonderful um, list of panelists. So in just about a few seconds, we'll we'll get started on the presentation. Wonderful. I see that plenty of people are joining us. Wonderful. All right, let's get started. So Good morning, everybody. My name is Adrian Villar. I'm head of business development for IBT Online, personally based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the rest of today's panelists. Of, of course, I'm joined today by the Director of International Business Development for Export Delaware, Beth Pomper. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. Happy to, happy to see everyone today and thank you all for joining. Of course, and, and we're extremely help, uh, thankful to have um, Export Delaware here today and uh, to uh, be supportive of uh, Delaware exporters and growing their export sales brand and business. And of course, I'm joined today by my colleague, our senior online marketing manager, marketer, marketeer extraordinaire, Joel Atzerota. Good morning, Joel. Good morning, Agent. Good morning, everyone. Wonderful. And a bit later this morning, we're going to be joined by Dean Gambale. He is the owner of Extreme Bolt and Fastener and um, uh, uh, somebody who's taken advantage of the Delaware online global programs to help grow their exports and sales um, in, spite of, uh, in spite of um, uh, uh, adverse circumstances brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. So in terms of today, we have a bit of an agenda here, which I'll share with you. Um, that agenda is divided into uh, five sections, I believe. So as we go on to the next slide, uh, we should be able to see that. Let's see. Looks like we're having a bit of a technical difficulty with the presentation. Oh, there it is. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So in today's presentation, uh, we'll just uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the services that are offered by Export Delaware for uh, exporters in the state. And uh, then I'll uh, uh, chime in about why exporters in Delaware need online business development tools. Dean will come in um, immediately afterwards, share a little bit about his experience with working with IBT Online and Export Delaware uh, for the Delaware Online Global Programs before uh, moving on to website localization and our and my colleague, Joel, um, discussing international online marketing. We're gonna leave space at the end for takeaways and Q&A, but the chat box is open and will remain open throughout the presentation. If you have any questions at all throughout the presentation, please do feel free to uh, type those into the chat box. It's gonna be on that little panel on your right-hand side, and we will address those towards the very end of the presentation. And with that in mind, I will um, now uh, pass on the speaking totem to uh, Beth, who will uh, tell us a little bit about Export Delaware and the wonderful services that they offer in support of Delaware's exporters. Beth, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, well, thank you all. Uh, and uh, we have some exciting opportunities to share with you all today. I'm Beth Pomper, uh, Director of International Business Development for the State of Delaware, for Export Delaware. And part of our initiative is, of course, uh, the Delaware Online Program. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, we do uh, quite a few programs at the state. Uh, but one that we want to talk about this morning is our is our step grant, which is our export grant. I'm happy to let everyone know this morning. You're really the first to know in the state that we were able to secure another grant award 
for this year for our funding and we received every penny that we asked for so we are fully funded and that means we're able to offer Delaware small businesses some funding to help you with your export expenses so currently we're able to give each Delaware small business that's eligible up to seven thousand dollars of grant funds for this year our year starts october 1st and it ends september 29th of 2022 so this works as a 50 percent reimbursement program the best way to think of it is like a corporate expense report where you spend your money and then you would apply to get half of it back so to get a full 7,000 back, you would spend 14,000, okay? Um, you can't just spend the money without receiving an approval first. So the first thing you do is you complete an application. It's very simple. It will take you no more than 15 minutes to complete. It's not a bunch of government ease. Uh, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. You would email the application back to Export Delaware. We would review it, to make sure it's complete, and then we would issue you an approval letter. We, we, can, we can do this in a matter of days. It, it's a very short turnaround time. And then once you get that approval letter, then you're approved to go ahead and spend the funds for what you're approved for. Next slide, please. I'm very happy to announce that as a result, a good thing that happened as a result of the pandemic is that website uh, internationalization, translation, search engine optimization, and globalization is now an eligible expense. So we can give each Delaware business up to $6,000 to assist with the, uh, with the charges and the professional fees to have this done. And I'm very happy to uh, work with IBT Online. Uh, we've been putting this program in place, I guess, for just about a year now, a little over a year. And I really looked hard to find the best partner for the state and for our small businesses to work with. And without question, we found it in IBT. Uh, their team can take uh, your entire website and they know what to do. They know what to increase your traffic uh, and how to make it work. And we do have uh, quite a few Delaware small businesses that have taken advantage of this, and you'll hear from Dean later, uh, to, that can really explain and demonstrate the uptick of leads that they've been receiving and, uh, and sales. Next slide. Okay, so we talked about this. Um, you apply for a grant. We can send you, if you wanna reach out to us, uh, to me after the session, we can email you a grant application, or you can find that on our website, www.export.delaware.gov. Um, we'll give you a notice of award. Uh, you can work with uh, IBT online to enhance your website. Then you would pay them their fees, submit the receipts to us, and then the state reimburses you um, half up to six thousand uh, dollars for your for your costs. It's not a long process. Next slide. And that is uh, the next slide is my contact details for those of you that, that don't have it. 
Um, but I just want to say what is so nice about IBT is they take the whole problem and solve it for you. So it doesn't take a lot of your time, you know, to manage it. If you're not an IT person, they know how to do it. They know um, which words to, um, to, to, to use for search engine optimization in foreign countries. And they're wonderful people, they're great to work with. And uh, I know that uh, Adrian's gonna do a great job on, on showing you uh, how they work and what you can expect. Over to you, Adrian. Wonderful, Beth. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for that overview of the Delaware um, uh, online global programs. And of course, the support that's available from Export Delaware for companies in Delaware interested in doing this. Um, $6,000 and is, is a considerable amount and it helps offset the cost of the program significantly. So now many of you may be wondering, you know, why do Delaware exporters even need online tools? And what are these online business development tools? So when we talk to companies today, when we talk to exporters in Delaware and across the United States today, these are some of the priorities that they tell us that they have at the moment. You know, of course, with the pandemic and with everything that's going on, the state of the market, companies are really looking after their stakeholders or employees or suppliers, of course. Um, they're looking at managing costs and cash flow, maintaining those critical supply chains, which are, um, uh, you know, stressed at the moment. And of course, um, to keep growing, to keep generating sales, exports, and business in spite of the global challenges. Um, and that's exactly what um, online business development tools are designed to do. They're designed to keep um, the cash register clinking. It's design, they're designed to keep um, export sales and business flowing. So in the next slide, what we'll see here in a second is uh, some of the, uh, uh, just to understand how that happens. Uh, first, we need to understand where we are right now and how the world has uh, gone online and more so in the last 18 months, as all of you can, uh, can imagine. Uh, I imagine many of you on today's webinar are completely zoomed out, zoom fatigued, and you've been on these calls forever and a half. Um, and that's not just a trend here in the United States. It is, in fact, a global trend. The world has gone online. These are figures that are shared by Hootsuite that uh, collect and collate a lot of this information. Um, and just in, in 2021, uh, 4.8 billion people are online, and they're spending quite a bit of time online. They're spending about seven hours online. Um, and that's a, a huge amount of growth. Uh, just in the last year, over 257 million people joined the internet and over 500 million people joined social media. What that means for you as a business owner, as a leader within your organization, is that you know where your prospects, where your clients, where your suppliers, where your future employees are. They're online and they're spending quite a bit of time online. And so using online business development tools uh, can help you connect with those individuals, the right individuals, in a very cost-effective and time-efficient manner. Now, in the next slide, what we'll see is a little bit more about uh, social media in particular and the growth of social media over the past uh, year. And uh, you'll see there that figure of 520 million people joining the internet or joining uh, social media in 2021. That's a huge amount of growth. That's 13% year over year. And most people, as you see uh, right on the right hand side of that, um, they're joining on one of these devices, one of these little iPhones or Androids. They're uh, using mobile devices to consume social media. Um, and this does include um, business users. So a lot of people um, you know, see social media perhaps as, as just a tool um for b2c but it is in fact a b2b tool and in fact the number of uh time that uh, uh business users are using social media has gone up um dramatically so it's not something that um you can or should ignore in the next slide what we'll see is just a little bit more about uh, why online is for everybody and in fact why um social media is for everybody uh, you know, 94% of B2B purchases are started before anybody ever connects with a sales rep or a distributor. And it starts usually with a pretty generic term. 
So um, if somebody's looking for a coffee shop near them, they're gonna start with just looking coffee shop near me. They're not gonna necessarily start with a brand. In fact, 70% of searches start off pretty generically. So having um, the right keywords on your website and the right keywords in your social media to make yourself findable um, is extremely important. Uh, now, mind you, 50% of B2B search, search queries today are initiated on smartphones, and that figure has already exceeded 70% in 2020. So you need to start using these business development channels that are available to you online to connect with buyers who are already looking for you. Now, in the next slide, what we'll see is uh, some information regarding the uh, two business development tools that we'll be talking about today. They're two interconnected pieces, as you see on the screen. On one side, we have the websites, and the websites are can be B2B, B2C, B2G, with or without e-commerce, but having a solid online presence is extremely important. And then the other piece of this is the online marketing, uh, the search engine marketing, the social media marketing, that drives traffic engagement and conversions on the website you know at some point it used to be perfectly acceptable just to have a basic website um, in the us that would and that would be sufficient um, but in today's economy you really do need to be proactively driving traffic to your website uh, to ensure conversion and ensure roi on your website investment so those are two um, business development tools that we'll be talking about today in the next slide, what we'll see is uh, just how um, this works primarily. Think of your websites as as real estate, okay? Think of them as um, uh, your, your your entire communications policy as, as real estate. And websites are basically land. So when you um, have a, a, a communications policy around a website, the first thing that you need is a very well-functioning, content-rich uh, website that um uh that users uh can navigate on and uh it, for example in this particular case you see a company that has target markets in france and brazil and uh, you know whenever you build real estate the first thing you need to do is buy land and your website is like buying land so uh you set up properly a a, a network of websites would have your website across um three different uh, domains. So you would have a French website with content that is appropriate for the French market on a French domain name on a .com.fr. Um, and same thing in Brazil, you would have a, a Portuguese, a Brazilian Portuguese language website on a .com.br domain. And then you would have um, around all three of those, your US website, your French website, your Brazil website, you would have um, a, a search engine optimization policy and social media uh, policy that would drive traffic engagement and conversion into it. Of course, branding is very important. So whenever people visit any of your websites, it's going to feel like they're still on your company website, but the content is going to be adapted to the specific needs, desires, and, and uh, pain points of clients and potential clients that you may have in different markets. So this is how a, a properly developed uh, localization um, looks like. Now, in the next slide, what you'll see here is uh, uh, just a summary of why you need localized websites. And the answer to this is that the world has gone online. Um, and your clients, your prospects, your future employees, future suppliers that you might need to connect with and build relationships with, they're all online. They're spending a lot of time online and they're searching for you, not necessarily by name, because they might not know who you are but they are searching for the products and the services that you produce generically in their local language, in their um, local online environment. Um, and as we prepare for this new normal where you know, travel is still pretty restricted, you know, I just came back from spending uh, two weeks in Europe and I don't know how many forms I filled out and QR codes I needed to download to my phone. So there's still a lot of friction in travel and there will continue to be a lot of friction in travel for some time into the future. So online business development is here to stay. It's growing, it continues to grow. And using uh, effective, really cost-effective tools that are available out there can help you get found, can help you be understood, and can help you be easy to do business with in your target markets 
without um, impacting or really with uh, a positive impact on your bottom line. So um, that's what the online global programs that we've developed in collaboration with Export Delaware are designed to do. They're designed to drive um, top end revenue growth by making the internet work for you globally. Um, the net benefit is that you will have an online presence that allows you to reach new international markets or existing top export markets, allowing you to be found and be understood in those markets, generate leads, grow your international sales. Um, and regardless whether you're a B2B or B2C or even a B2G company, because we do work with a, a variety of government um, contractors, we um, and the Delaware Online Global Programs are there to uh, grow your business, uh, grow your brand awareness, your credibility and trust into new markets, while at the same time, because you'll own and control your online presence, it's all metrics driven. And of course, because of the generous uh, grants that are available via the state of Delaware and their STEP program, um, they come significantly underwritten in terms of costs, making ROI extremely viable. Now, uh, I will, uh, uh, Joelle, you have a poll. I do have a poll, Adrian. Thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt, Bartho. Before we move on and hand over to uh, to Dean, I'd just like yeah. to really see who we've got in the um, audience today. And, six, six um, you know, we've talked about it best. Thank you so much for, you know, fantastic introduction of the grants and what's available through Export Delaware. And uh, really, Adrian, thank you so much for a good introduction. And we'll dive into website localization a little bit more depth in a moment. But I just wanted to launch a quick poll and just see whether, um, you know, our audience are interested in, you know, hearing a little bit more about uh, the Delaware Online Global Program, um, how this can work for them and like how said, we can support them in indeed becoming, our, our um, you know, growing the brand so sales and business by and becoming easier to be across, found, understood and do business online. Be, uh, so wraps, I'll leave this up there comments. for um, a little um, while. I can see we can, again, a we, few we can people that are interested, which is fantastic to hear. As I say, well, we've had a couple of questions in as well we shall take the opportunity to say we have saved yeah. for the Q&A, but if we don't manage to answer them all at the end, okay. we'll get back to you all individually. So please do keep them coming and we'll be curating them as we go with the session and then we'll be able to answer them all, um, answer them all at the end. But I'll just give a couple more sec seconds for the poll. As I can see, we we'll still have some answers coming through. A few more seconds and here we go. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And Adrian, back to you. Thank you so much, Joelle, and thank you everybody for your enthusiastic participation in the poll. Uh, but now I would like to introduce you to um, Dean Gambale. Dean is uh, president and owner of Extreme Bolt and Fastener. Uh, Extreme Bolt and Fastener is a Delaware-based company that has taken advantage of the Delaware online global programs um, to grow their export sales brand and business in spite of a uh, challenging um, export environment. Uh, so, Dean, welcome, and uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, can you all hear me? We sure can. Oh, great. That's always good to know. So, just uh, I guess I could give you a quick background about Extreme Bolt. Um, we are uh, essentially a specialized fastener uh, distributor, and um, we primarily have businesses within the United States, and uh, we are obviously we're looking to expand. Uh, into more into Europe and uh, right in our neighborhood in, in Mexico. Um, currently, probably over 90% of our business is within the United States, uh, and we know uh, there's business outside the United States, so we are looking at developing a um, German and Mexican websites with IBT. Get the next slide. I don't know if I can control the slides or not. So right now um, we are, uh, IBT is in the process of actually getting fairly close to finalizing our websites. They're not 100% uh, live yet, but um, we have our websites organized by materials and um, the different types of fasteners that exist. And what you're looking at here is uh, a products page based on the material, which is 254 SMO and 174 pH. So obviously they're translated into their respective languages. Uh, so hopefully 
the keywords that we're looking for in each uh, market can find it uh, easily um, and uh, find us. That's the that's the point. Next slide, please. Perfect. Uh, Dean, thank you so much for that. We had a, a question come into the chat, which I think you might be um, able to answer. And I know we said questions at the end, but um, I embrace chaos sometimes. So I'm going to throw this at you. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody was asking, uh, you know, how much um, time and how involved um, is, is your participation in the localization project? Is it eating up a ton of your time um, and, and how is that managed in terms of not having, um, you know, uh, uh, necessarily a marketing team internally at Extreme Bowl? Yeah, so the process has been fairly uh, simple um, in terms of explaining what we want. So we have an, obviously we have an existing website which uh, acts as the guide and then um, IBT tries to figure out what are the key components of that to not necessarily duplicate the website, but to have a, a uh, kind of a, uh, a powerful uh, searchable website that uh, the local local countries will find. And the the, the experience has been pretty simple; it hasn't taken much time. Just a, a really a few meetings um, over the course of a few months. It's, it's really uh, just to see how things are going and make sure things are kind of on the right track and uh, any questions that uh, you know they may have in terms of how to what angles to pursue or not pursue but it's been pretty uh, pretty pretty simple perfect thank you Dean and a follow-up question to that um, same person asks us uh, you know what has um, uh, I guess the, the the overview of the project been like for you uh, do you have good visibility into how the website is being uh, developed? And um, you know, can you speak to a little bit about that? That's that was the question. How much visibility do you have as to the development of the project? Well, I, I think you have as much visibility as you want or can handle. <laughs> so I don't necessarily want to know all the little details, and that's that's why we have IBT doing it. But um, surely we get the updates uh, that we need uh, to see, and and um, the prototypes as it's coming along, just to make sure things are on track and. From my perspective, that's that's what I like to see. I just like to see the, the progress and the updates and make sure that the framework and the outline is correct. And that's um, that's that's been uh, pretty easy. But anytime I need an update uh, or I feel like oh, I want to see where we're at with things, it's just to ask you guys. And you guys have been very responsive. Brilliant. Brian, I guess uh, no, but just a question that I thought about, but um, I'm sure it might be shared by some of the people in the audience. Uh, in terms of the step grant application process, um, did you how how long did it take for you to get approval, and uh, what what was that like? Um, the process was fairly painless. We were surprised about that because usually anything with a uh, you know. <laughs> government type stuff could be cumbersome and whatnot but i if i remember my, my partner helped, uh, did most of the work on that but i remember being surprised at how uh easy it was mm -hmm. um so it uh and i, I know the uh the Pete beth over there and uh they, they did a great job in the delaware office to kind of organize uh, you know the paperwork and tell us exactly what's needed without having to kind of pull your hair out and trying to figure out what's going on so it was, it was pretty painless. Perfect, perfect. Well, Dean, thank you so much for um, sharing a little bit about your experience. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, you know, if you can stick around until the end, we, there might be some additional questions uh, sure. from the audience. Sure thing, no problem. Perfect. Great. Well, uh, again, uh, thank you very much uh, to Dean and, of course, uh, to Export Delaware, who supported um, Extreme Bolt in their um, online global program with uh, funding. And as, as you heard from Dean, you know, the process was relatively simple. Uh, but I want to talk to you guys a little bit about website localization for um, Delaware exporters and to explain a little bit about the mechanics of why localization is effective and why it is a good business development strategy. 
oftentimes companies ask us, well, why can I just use my US website to go global? I have a great US website, it's wonderful design. Um, you know, we do all the SEO work and it's, it's frequently done. Why can't I just use this website to go global? And the reality is that if you think of Google as just one search engine, in reality, Google is about 192 different search engines sort of interconnected to each other. But the, the algorithm, the underlying algorithm behind Google, behind Bing, behind Yahoo, behind Baidu, and behind a lot of the other search engines that are out there is that they deliver what is known as hyper-relevant uh, searcher results. They're, they're search-centric search engines, um, and they, develop, they uh, 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 give results that are relevant or that the algorithm things are relevant to the searcher. This is why, for example, I'm here in Fort Lauderdale. If I Google coffee shop into, uh, or if I type in uh, coffee shop into Google, I'm gonna get very, very different results um, than you, know, you guys up in Delaware. The reason why is that even though there's a lot of coffee shops and there's a lot of websites that say coffee shop on it, um, Google is going to deliver a subset of results that it thinks are relevant to me being here in Fort Lauderdale. So if you think about that on a grander scale, um, as you can imagine, a searcher on the other side of the world uh, looking for a search term in their native language, say it's it's German, Germany, and they're going on google.de and they're looking up a search term in German or in Mexico uh, on google.com.mx and typing in a search term in Spanish. Unless your website has content that um, is directly reflective of those keywords that are being typed in, uh, the odds are is that your website is just not going to appear uh, on that search or results page. And oftentimes, um, your competitors who may have localized websites and may have um, a, a leg up on that, even if their product is not uh, as good as yours, but they'll have you know the marketing behind them to get in front of more consumers. So that's why um, uh, a localization is a smart uh, business decision. Now, in the next slide, what we'll see here is uh, a, an example here of what I was just telling you guys about. Um, now, this is an example that uh, Joel and I looked up. Uh, I set um, up my IP address to appear as Delaware, and she from the UK looked up squeakless dog toys. We both have dogs, and today we're both in the office, but oftentimes we're working from home, and those dogs do like to uh, kind of bark and, and, and you know, appear whenever there is a, uh, a webinar. They, they have this localization. They, they know when, when a webinar is coming and they start barking. So we decided to start looking for squeakless dog toys. Um, and so I ran my search here in the US and I set my IP up as Delaware and got the results on the left and she did the same from London. She got the results on the right. And as you can see, the result sets are quite different. We're using the same search engine. This is Google. We're entering the same um, uh, search terms, but the result sets are entirely different. On my result sets, there's some familiar uh, usual suspects like Chewy and Petco. Um, and I got uh, results from um, the US uh, Amazon website and Yahoo. And she got a couple of results that I've never heard about in my life, something called barksandbunnies.co.uk and timeforpaws.co.uk. Um, and then of course she got results from the localized versions of Amazon and Yahoo. So she got results on amazon.co.uk and uk.news.yahoo.com. So, if you can imagine again, um, this is just an example in the same language on the same uh, search engine, Google, um, and then getting two very, very different set of results. Um, just imagine how uh, uh, different it can be, or how much more different it can be if uh, you, you throw in a different language into the mix and uh, even more diverse geography into the mix. Now on the next slide, what we have is an example of keywords. So we've talked about keywords um, and how important it is to have those keywords or specific keywords on your website. But this is where you know the importance of the right translation is uh, is key to making sure your website can be found, which is objective number one. Um, in when we do keyword research, the first thing that we uh, look at is the target market. And the example you have on screen here is for a company that was interested in selling auto parts into 
uh, different Spanish-speaking markets, those markets being Mexico and Spain. Um, and now, again, this is the same search engine, same language, Spanish to Spanish, but, but um, it led to the development of different keywords. So why does this happen? Because even though you can translate car in Spanish as auto or coche, depending on the country, in this case, Mexico and Spain, um, there is a clear preference of one over the other. As you can see in Mexico on the right-hand side, most people, 73% of people, when they search for something they used, uh, they related to uh, car accessories or parts, they use the term auto, and only 27% of them use coche. So in Mexico, you more than likely want to use um, auto in your keywords and making sure that your SEO uses um, the word uh, uh auto quite frequently whereas in spain you most definitely want to use coche because 91 percent of searchers are using the word coche in their search terms in their keywords that they're typing into google uh, in order to uh, find results related to car accessories or car parts and only nine percent of them are using the word auto so again same language two different markets um, same search engine google um, but depending on the target market, there is a different choice of uh, keywords. So this is why it's important to localize, not just to translate to a language, but you really want to make sure that you're localizing to your top export market to ensure that your um, website is relevant to searchers in that particular market and that they can find it easily. In the next slide, what we'll see is a, a little bit about um, just other things that you need to do in order to localize a site. It's not just about translation. Um, it needs to be a customer-centric website, which means, um, among other things, that you must have a registered domain name in that country. Uh, you want to make sure it's mobile-enabled in certain markets, for example, um, in Europe, in Latin America, and most certainly in um, countries like uh, China and, and, the, and, and the Far East. Um, having mobile-first websites is a must. Uh, that's very different from, for example, the U.S. and Canada, where uh, searching on a laptop like I have in front of me right now or a desktop is far more common. And of course, uh, taking into account cultural aspects um, optimized for local search engines, which may not be the same ones we use here in China, for example. Baidu is the primary search engine. It's not Google. Uh, making sure the website is hosted locally on a uh, local server with a local IP address. And of course, um, that you have met all the regulatory requirements if you think about Canada and if you think about uh, the UK and Europe, for example, they do have certain privacy requirements, GDPR requirements, and you want to make sure that your website is fully compliant, again, to optimize for local search engines. And this is the process behind localization. It's not tra just translation. Translation is one little piece. It is all of these things that are on your right hand side and that's what um, all is involved with making sure that your website is searchable findable and easy to communicate with um, with the uh, clients in that perspective uh, prospective regions now in the next slide what we'll see here is um, just a little bit about a uh, localization done right and so for this client for example this is a client who, who whose target market was australia and these are the results over the set of 30 days in, a, in his target market using Google Analytics for you, those of you that are familiar with the screen. Um, and what we have here is traffic report. And so the traffic report on your left, that shows you how many visitors that website received um, from their target market. And as you can see, 86% of traffic, in fact, did come from Australia. Um, and 92% of traffic came from Australia and New Zealand. And only a few visitors trickled in from the US, the United Kingdom, India, Canada, um, and the Philippines. So what does that mean? So what that means is that done right, this website, uh, .com.au domain and locally hosted in Australia with keyword optimization for the Australian market, Google um, it delivered uh, targeted results, meaning that the website was proven to be highly relevant for the Australian um, uh, audience and uh, very uh, relevant to uh, the South Pacific uh, uh, with the New Zealand and Australia, but barely relevant to any other um, English speaking countries and basically irrelevant to any non English speaking countries. 
Um, and on the right hand side, you can see for this particular client, their core market uh, was in Southeast Australia. So uh, New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria. You can see that the bulk of the traffic to their website, in fact, came from those regions because of additional marketing efforts that we did um, into those particular um, uh, regions in Australia. So this is localization done right. This is where uh, you can see that the traffic is coming from um, the specific target markets where uh, the client is interested in. And in the next slide, uh, what we'll see is another case study of a, uh, a Delaware-based company called Analytical Biological Services. Their interest uh, was in Japan and Germany, uh, two very big uh, export markets. Uh, where um, you know biopharma and, uh, and and life sciences are, are uh, huge, and so their interests were in brand awareness, brand positioning, and recruiting new distributors, which is often something that companies come to us about. And so we designed websites for them. Of course, as you can see, that have been uh, professionally fully translated into German, into Japanese, that are sitting on German and Japanese domain names. Um, and that have the specific calls to action to uh, recruit distributors so that there are form submissions and there are specific uh, language in there that drives people to submit a, um, a, a request uh, to become a distributor for ABS in those target markets. And so this has allowed them, in spite of the, the travel restrictions around COVID-19 and all of the business development challenges that that has represented, it has allowed ABS to continue growing um, and generating revenue, essentially using online business development tools. In the next slide, um, I will, I'm sure there is uh, a poll, or is there, Joelle? Not yet, the poll. Not yet. Will come a little bit later. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Joelle, over to you now to tell um, our audience about uh, some of the the other side of the equation, the um, the online marketing tools that they need to drive traffic, drive engagement, drive conversions on their website, and get ROI on it. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Adrian. And let's dive in. Perfect. So as Adrian mentioned in the in the slides earlier, you really have two sides of your online presence. One really being your website, but then once your website is live, then uh, it should really be supported and dovetailed with a strong um, digital marketing strategy. And the reason why today I've decided to focus a little bit more here on social media strategy is because um, often, you know, B2B uh, and B2G companies tend to overlook this. And I really wanted to emphasize that a complete international marketing strategy should really include social media. And why is this? The reason is because, uh, you know, expanding your other marketing efforts, building brand awareness, connecting with your audiences, it all happens on social media. Just here, um, some, um, some data from Hootsuite, who do a fantastic job in, you know, gathering market data across the world. We can really see what the primary channels for online brand search. So where do people, discover new brands, discover new products, and do their research on them once they are, are making their decisions on, on where to go next. And we can see here search engines remain uh, nearly 50 percent of, um, of, the, of the searches, but that is very closely followed by social networks. And here we're talking LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook being the biggest one, but then also looking at other markets, for example, China, you'll be looking at your Weibo, your WeChat, so really is important for everyone, every company, every business, not to underestimate the power of social media. And this is also because, um, you know, it's not just building brand awareness. You can be present. You can showcase your product. You can really connect with the right people at the right time when they are ready and when they're navigating. But it's also one of the most powerful ways of really reaching everyone that is in your industry. So social media really leveled the playing field for businesses of all sides is really giving small to medium sized businesses huge opportunities to be seen, be understood, and then take that uh, conversation to the next level. If you think about, you know, a small business in uh, in Delaware, let's say a 10 person uh, beauty parlor, they are posting on Facebook, they're advertising on Facebook, and that post is shown to the same audience as someone you know right next to a Dior, an international powerhouse with 100 million marketing budget. And that is crazy. It's really giving companies the same opportunities to be on these platforms and to be seen by the companies 
in their international target markets. So diving a little bit more into where to start with your international marketing strategy before you, you know, social media, before you go and post and start, you know, posting content. And especially when you, before you start spending any money on potentially advertising your business on social media, it's very important to step back and do some research. You do want to understand who your international buyer persona is. And what do I mean with buyer persona? Buyer persona is, as HubSpot defines it, a, um, a user, is your ideal customer based on uh, real data that you have, you know who your customers are, but also some like um, analytical data. Where are they? Where do they live? How old are they? And how do they engage online? So you might have a very clear understanding of who your buyer persona is for your, um, your US market, or maybe even smaller than that, your regional market. But how does this translate internationally? Are they different? And in what ways? Do you have multiple buyer persona in your markets? Do you have multiple buyer persona across your different product line? The answer is probably yes, and so you should. So you should be able to identify different buyer personas across your international markets because different markets behave differently, they use the internet differently, they're on different platforms, but also they have different values and they value information in a different way. So what I wanted to show here is just an example from uh, L'Oreal who are frequently cited for how spot on they are with their international marketing. So here we can see L'Oreal USA, very women heavy, empowered at the top of, um, you know, top floor of building, in charge, very diverse environment, and that will resonate with their target audience in the US. Well, if we take the same brand, but we move it to Mexico, we can see here how it's already quite different. This, first of all, is a mixed environment, but it also looks a lot more collaborative and there is maybe a lighter feel to, um, to you know, that working day. And that really speaks to their audiences in the market. This is what the, the Mexican buyer persona would expect to see and what they would relate to. And again, maybe a market that in principle is similar, but if we look at L'Oreal Brazil, again, pretty different from the previous two. You can see here the imagery, and especially if we look at the background, you can see how this is um, very clearly Brazil, very linked to nature. And here again, we have strong women in a powerful working environment. And this is what resonates with them. This is what is important to their target audience in that target market. So this is just a short example to show you that L'Oreal here very clearly understood who the buyer persona is that is clearly different in those three target market. And their messaging and their imagery is very respectful of that. So once we have the um, we have a buyer persona set, we know what the buyer's journey is. It's very important before we get started with any marketing and especially social media marketing strategy. Important to always be aligned with your overall business strategy. So set your goals, and this will give you a fantastic starting point to then decide what you want to achieve, decide how you're going to tackle uh, your marketing strategy, and then be able to analyze your results and determine your return on investment. So here, just an example, I've taken Facebook, again, as an example, as we're all familiar with the platform. One social media platform alone, you can already see how you can, depending on what you're trying to achieve, how you can tailor your strategy, what kind of goals should you be setting, and what metrics you should be, you should be looking at. If you're looking at growing brand awareness, then we'll be looking at growing your follower base, getting more shares, more likes. Whereas if you're looking at, for example, driving leads and sales, so conversion through social media, then we'll be looking at how many people came to the website through social media, how many people ended up signing up or um, completing a form on your Facebook advertising, on your Facebook organic posting. So here you see different levels of your, of your marketing strategy, different goals and different metrics to track. So very important to understand what social media means to you and what part it can play in your uh, in your overall business strategy. We talked about different markets. We talked about localization. We talked about buyer persona. I just wanted to show here a great example of how different buyer persona can interact with social media campaigns and how important it is to make sure you understand them and you track the correct metrics to really be able to see what is working and what's not working for you, improving your campaigns and really improving your results. So this is an example again for continuity of picked Facebook. And here is an example of a campaigns we uh, are running for one of our clients. 
they are targeting Mexico and the United Kingdom. And here we were promoting the same product using similar imagery and a similar messaging, although, of course, localizing it, so staying relevant to the local audiences and the keyword research that was so important at the beginning of every localization, whether it's marketing or website, as Adrian introduced you to a little bit earlier on today. So if we looked here at the um, at the specific results for this post, we analyzed the UK. It's a 1,200 on engagement, and we were pleased with it. Then we moved on to our Mexican campaign, and we were blown away with seeing over 2,400 engagements. So it's fair to say that if we stop the analysis at this point, we could infer that our campaign in Mexico worked much better. We should move all of our budget towards Mexico and the UK. It didn't quite work for us, right? Well, that's not always the case. So this is one metric. Engagement is one KPI that we are monitoring. But at the same time, what we are doing with this specific campaign is looking from website visitors, so your blue and your and your red here, how many people from social media then go on to purchase. So who is then uh, downloading a PDF and who is then adding something to your cart? And if you look at the numbers here, it's fairly even. Yes, we had a lot more engagement. Yes, we had a lot more traffic from social media from Mexico. But if you look at your yellow and green or your sales, they are pretty even. And this is just to show that in the UK, maybe we're a little bit more bit frostier. In Mexico, we know that our audience engages really easily. They're incredibly reactive and responsive on social media. They will love to visit your website. But then it will take a lot more engagement to achieve the same conversions. Whereas in the UK, because someone doesn't like your post or doesn't engage with it, it doesn't mean that they're not paying attention to it, valuing it, and then coming back to your website and purchasing at the same rate as your Mexican users would do whilst engaging on Facebook. So here again, we know from experience that we need this level of engagement in Mexico, but we also know that we need to monitor closely what happens after to make sure that we can evaluate how successful our social media strategy is. So I know I've gone through this quite quickly, but I just wanted to share some online marketing best practices. And again, we have dedicated resources and a fully dedicated webinar on online marketing. So if you're looking to find out more, if you'd love to know more, please don't hesitate to go and find it on our website or get in touch and we can share with you some more information. But just really to round off um, this section today, best practices, have a localized website and use it as your local springboard, as I like to call it. People come back, they find you and that's how they're going to engage, get to know you and really building that trust. That is so important to move them down to that buyer's journey and support that um, decision making process. Before you launch anything, get to know your audience, get to know your buyer persona and the buyer's journey. Set your goals for your social media strategy. This is the boring part, but it's so important to make sure then along the way you'll be able to optimize for your return on investment. Choose which platforms are worth your resources. I always say start small and then expand. And which platform I, I hear some of you ask, that is very much dependent on uh, um, who your buyer persona is, what international target market you're going into. So all of the research you do at the beginning will really help you inform your strategy and start from a marketplace that you're very comfortable with. Social media, as we say, is a very, very engaging, is a fantastic platform to reach your, your customers, your prospects, your partners. Make sure you engage back. It's a two-way stream, okay? So answer all comments and mentions. Get in touch with people that request more information. Just show them that they've engaged with you and you're there ready to engage with them. Look, analyze, keep learning. Look at your metric. If there's something that doesn't quite work, tweak it, continue to look at it. And as I always say, don't stop. Keep going. It will take some time to get it right. But if you've done your research, your keyword research, your buyer persona research, then uh, keep going and the results will come in. Perfect. Very much like we have um, we have done for the website localization here at IBT Online. We've also developed uh, what we call the uh, online global marketing programs. And these have been really built to support uh, Delaware companies be found, be understood, and do business by leveraging search engine marketing, social media marketing, reporting and analytics. But we could also you know, look at email marketing, content marketing, CRM, HubSpot integration, really making sure that we can work with you in building a digital marketing strategy that is aligned with your business goal, relevant to your international target market, and would really blow your buyer persona away and really generate that traffic, that engagement, 
endless conversion, whether you're looking for sales on an e-commerce platform or whether you're looking for leads, distributor acquisition, whatever your business model, we're here to work with you to design a marketing strategy that can really work hard for you and really use that localized presence that you've built uh, through the website. So before I hand off, I've seen a couple of questions come in, we're closing to the Q&A, but before I hand over again to uh, Adrian, Beth, to um, some final remarks, I'd just like to, again, launch a quick poll and see if there is anyone that'd be interested in hearing a little bit more about uh, our online marketing programs and, uh, you know, really seeing what information we can provide and how we can work together, as I said, to develop something that's bespoke to you and really helping you leverage your online presence and get uh, you know, your website off the ground. But also you might have a very strong um, marketing presence in the US. How do we help you translate that into your international target markets? How do we help you make the most of it? And what the differences are and really trying to leverage your current assets. You, know, you don't have to start from scratch. I'm sure there is something there that you're already doing right. How does that work for international marketing campaigns and how do we make it work? So that's fantastic. Again, thank you so much for a very enthusiastic response here. I can see the keep coming in, so I'll leave it for another couple of seconds, but that is very, very good to see. And I'm pleased to see that some of you are definitely thinking about uh, digital marketing. So I look forward to the conversations to come over the next few, few days, few weeks. Fantastic. I'll close this and I'll hand back over to Adrian. Thank you so much, Joel, and thank you for those insights into the world of um, online marketing and, sp and specifically search engine marketing and social media marketing and how those can really help um, exporters with uh, driving traffic and driving engagement conversions on their websites. Uh, so a few takeaways and then, of course, our, our Q&A. Um, a couple of uh, lessons learned here for you guys. Um, in the, let's see. Yeah. Uh, so why do you need to be online? Why do you need business development tools uh, that help you uh, drive online growth? Is because the world has gone online, and more so in the last 18 years. Um, the important thing to note here is that people are spending quite a bit of time online, um, eight hours plus per day in some cases, um, and that includes your clients, your prospects, your future employees, and future suppliers. Um, and they might be looking for you in their local online environment, in their local language. So it is important to have um, business development tools that are cost effective, that are efficient, that can help you connect, that can help you get found, be understood, and be easy to do business with into those target markets. Uh, and those tools, in our view, are localized websites and online marketing. And with the support of Export Delaware, we have developed the Delaware Online Global Programs, which are there to do exactly that, to make the internet work for you globally 24-7, 365, into your top export markets, whether those are Canada and Mexico or China and Japan and anywhere in between. Uh, we've developed programs for over 500 companies in over 65 different target markets in over 25 different languages. And we've received the President's E Award as a result of our success in supporting the success of exporters that we've partnered with across the United States. Um, IBT Online works with over 25 different state agencies, including, and we're very proud of the relationship with the state of Delaware. And we've helped many Delaware companies already succeed online and globally by reaching new markets, by getting found, getting understood, and be easy to do business with in their target markets, growing their international sales uh, at a very cost efficient way. We support uh, companies that are in the B2B space, in the B2C space, in the B2G space. Uh, so we know and understand those different routes to market and can customize and tailor the programs to meet your goals, to meet your expectations, and meet your specific needs. Uh, and of course, with the support of Export uh, Delaware and the generous step grants are available, the $6,000 that uh, Beth was uh, discussing for website localization and funding that's available for online marketing as well, um, these programs come at a reduced cost and uh, in a manner that um, offsets a lot of the investment into the programs. So with that in mind, I know we have a few questions from our audience. Joelle, you wanna um, tackle those in the last couple of minutes? Absolutely, I thought I'll go all webinar without credit to unmute myself. There we go. <laughs> 
We had a couple of questions come in in um, relation to websites located in other countries. You talked about a uh, localized domain. I don't know, Adrian, it might be a technical question, but um, does the company need to have a specific in-market uh, business presence or is this just for China? Are there other markets like that? How do you go about securing domain names? It's a great question. And uh, the the answer, perhaps unsatisfyingly, is that it varies tremendously. Um, certain countries like China and Canada uh, do require you to have a, uh, a, a, a corporation and be registered within the country uh, in, in, to do business. China has a whole set of additional requirements associated to that. Um, uh, but we provide a lot of guidance in that respect. And there's a lot of different approaches that you can take to domain names. There is, of course, the country code top level domains, CCTLDs, which would be, for example, purchasing a .cn or a .ca for Canada. But there are other, um, let's just say, less administratively involved and also less expensive options, including subdomains and subfolders that still provide a lot of search engine optimization benefits. So there's a lot of alternatives, and we're happy to talk with um, clients who are facing those challenges about some of those alternatives. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Adrian. Another question that came in, uh, maybe Beth, if you if you're still around, is this for you? You've done a fantastic job in explaining the timelines and how it takes. Are there any deadlines? What are companies looking at in terms of when should they submit their grant application? How does the process work? Do they get in touch with you first and then IBT online? Yes, uh, yes. You would get in touch with us, uh, complete a grant application. We can help you with that if, uh, if you need some help. You would um, send it back to us. We would issue an approval. Um, you do it by email. Um, there are deadlines. Uh, right now, with the current pot of money that we have to work with in Delaware, the work would have to be completed. IPT would have to complete your, your website and you would have to pay for that work by September 29th of 2022. So we've got just about a year, uh, just shy of a year um, to work with, with this particular um, funding. So obviously you've got to account for a couple of months time for the work to be done with IBT. And I will tell you all that, you know, we don't have a bottomless pit of money. We have a, a good amount, but it is a competitive grant. It's first come, first serve. And when we're out of money, we're out of money. Uh, but I have it now and uh, would certainly be willing to, uh, to speak with you and to help you in any way get started. So you'd get approved. And then of course, um, we would put you in touch uh, with IBT online and uh, you can begin you can begin work straight away, or if you have questions first, you might have questions first with IBT. Um, Adrian and Joelle and their and their team can are always available to talk to you and answer any specific questions you might have moving forward before you begin. That's fantastic, Beth. Thank you so much. And absolutely, we're here to help. So if you've got any concerns, any questions before you get the process started. You've got contact details on, on screen, reach out through the website, reach out directly. We look forward to hearing from you. I think that's all we've got time for today. I know we've run slightly over the hour, so thank you so much for everyone for sticking with us. A couple of last questions come in. Can we receive a copy of the presentation? Absolutely. Keep an eye on your email. Might be in your spam folder, but you will receive a recording of the of today's session uh, in a couple of days, I believe, within the next couple of business days. So it might be Monday. Keep an eye out for it. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Beth. Um, thank you so much, Dean, as well, for joining us. And Adrian, fantastic job as per usual. So thank you so much. And we look forward to um, continuing this conversation and really seeing how we can best support all the other companies uh, through the support that Beth and her fantastic team are also providing you really go global and thrive in these international markets. Thank you, everybody. Have a thank wonderful day. Much. Happy exporting. Thank you.